We can obviously often look at the A64 and talk about it being inconvenient and inconvenience for local people. We can talk about the economic bottleneck of it, but um, you know the tragic events we've seen 14 days ago today at Twelve Junction, two uh, two people um, around 11, 11 in the evening losing their lives. <clears throat> Only six weeks earlier, two other people, uh, Dave Tinker and Julie Goff, also lost their lives in very similar circumstances at Cranbeck Village. That brings the number of deaths on the A64 in the last 12 months into double figures. Ten people have lost their lives. So this is an absolute huge priority from a safety perspective, as well as from the other reasons we need this, the, this change. Um, the A64 carries uh, twice the amount of, of traffic, annual average daily traffic, for a single carriageway. Yet for 70 years, I think the campaign started to make it into new carriage, we've, we've seen no change. And probably it's fair to say people sat in the audience might be thinking, oh, why will this be any different? I think the good news, the really uh, important news, the important difference is we, I believe, po possibly for the first time, built the right kind of coalition. You've got to be careful in politics using the word coalition these days. <laughs> you bring the right kind of coalition around this cogent argument we've got. You've got to build a cogent argument in terms of the business case. I think we've got that. Um, we've got some money, courtesy of Robert, um, for, for, um, from the uh, money already allocated by, uh, by the government into uh, the hop grove improvement. But the cogent argument we've got, of course, is not about that improvement to the roundabout. We feel that is the wrong solution. Everybody you talk to in business, in our local authorities, in our local enterprise partnership, uh, in, in, um, in this fantastic group that Julian has been, uh, has been marshalling, is, knows that is absolutely the wrong solution. Our partners here in terms of uh, Kingspan and McCain, when, when you say to anybody, actually, instead of during the carriage when the A64, we're gonna improve the roundabout, roundabout again at Hopgrove, We'll just think, well, that's just a waste of public money. Don't do anything. So, uh, we've been working with Highways England. Uh, you get more with sugar than you do with salt, don't you? So, we're working with them and uh, to say, you know, what can we, what, where can we better spend this money? So, um, I think the money actually allocated for the Hop Grove scheme is about 135 million quid. But it's in, that, uh, it's in that bracket of 100 to 250 million. So we think we're going to need more than 135 million quid. We need all 250 million pounds to do some improvements at Hop Grove. But, uh, but crucially, what we need to see is that dual carriageway from the Hop Grove roundabout all the way through to, in the first instance, Barton Hill, where the Ginner restaurant is. And uh, I, uh, like you, and probably will this evening, when Barry and I go and talk to the to look north on the A64, we'll be sat in the traffic jam this evening along that road on a Friday evening, like we always are. And um, and that for key first section, if we can deliver a dual carriageway on that section, which I think will probably, if everything goes according to plan, uh, we should be able to deliver by 2022-2023. Uh, because the really good news. That, that we have, that How is England, on the, you see on their website, have now said that they actually prefer the solution of this dual carriageway rather than the hop growth scheme. So that's fantastic news. We need to build on that, keep the momentum from that. Um, we, we can't assume we've bagged that yet. We've got to keep up the pressure and make sure we, we take part in this consultation. But it's great, everybody's on the same page. Local authorities, local enterprise partnership, business, politicians, everybody, and the public, most importantly. So we're in a really good place. But I think we need to go further than that. We, we need to do is say, okay, we don't just you, you know, want that um, important, but first phase improvement, then, then go away and leave us for the 20, 30, 50 years. We want a sequential approach with a time span to get to make all the improvements we need from York all the way to, to, to the East Coast. And so the first one is that first phase to Barton Hill. We should be working right now in saying we want also, as Barry said earlier, the section between Cranbeck Village and Musley Bank to get to Malton, because that's a key element too in terms of traffic. But also another big issue is air pollution. And uh, I've, uh, I'm now uh, officially Michael Gove's bag carrier, so I uh, hear all about <laughs> our air quality, uh, air quality plan that we've got coming out. But, it's not just about urban centres air quality, we have a big issue in Malton, a 
in terms of air quality, particularly on Butcher Corners, as Robert said, over County Bridge. So um, if we delivered the right road improvement at Musley Bank and all movements junction there, that would take a lot of traffic out the centre of Malton. So that's key too. So, um, and then further from that is uh, a number of my correspondents, constituency correspondents will, uh, will be keen for me to say some, uh, some further improvements such as a, a bypass for Rillington. Because it's not just about the economy we have today, and we've got some great, econ a great economy across uh, North Yorkshire, some very, very good businesses from the micro to the multinational, which is tremendous, but some new businesses coming too. This place itself, and Andrew will talk to us in a second about the investment that's going in here, but also, as Robert said, we've got the potash, and we've got the wonderful colleges at Scarborough, and we've got green energy out there on the east coast, and we've got Bridlington Marina, all these things. And dare I say, we've got shale gas, potentially. It's part of my daily life talking about fracking. But um, to all these things, and we need good transport. Most business people will tell you uh, what they want from government. They want good infrastructure, and then government to keep out the way and give them a consistent framework. And I absolutely feel that this is a key, part, a key investment that this region needs. People think North Yorkshire is really wealthy, really rich place. Actually, we've got some of the lowest earnings across Rydale, across the whole, in the whole of Yorkshire. So we deserve this investment. The initial, uh, where we got to, where we are today, we're in a much, much better place. So we've got the momentum. We need to keep that momentum, and we need all, everybody in this room, and many, many more, to help us build that momentum, and build that pressure, and make sure we get the investment that we absolutely need, and we deserve.